Thank you, Kaushik. Uh, this is uh, Vishesh here. Hello, friends. Uh, I extend a warm welcome to all of you uh, for the H1 FY24 conference call. This is our first conference call post the IPO, addressing you all. And before we delve into the financial performance, I would first like to brief you about the business of the company. New Jersey Technologies uh, we established in year 2020 and we have been keenly focused on selling refurbished IT electronics directly to the customers. We understand our responsibilities towards a circular economy and a sustainable environment, and hence we emphasize on reducing electronic waste. Having this mission, we sell high-quality refurbished electronics like desktops, laptops, monitors to our customers. As we are selling refurbished products, it puts us on an advantageous position by meeting the demand at a lower cost and at a, and yet being able to provide a high quality electronics to our customers. Uh, we provide quality electronics with uh, guarantee. We provide a one year warranty to all our customers and we cater to various customer segments. Uh, this includes your individuals, institutions, and SME uh, businesses as such, right? To meet their electronic needs while helping them to save on the overall cost structure. Uh, we have been consistently for the, all the last three years seeing a very strong demand of refurbished products. And with our quality service, uh, we are really happy to uh, share with everyone that we have been like serving almost 1900 cities in India, right? And uh, yeah, sorry, 19,000 cities in India. And uh, so far, we have sold more than 75,000 uh, refurbished uh, units uh, 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 across India. With our vision to reduce the electronic waste and also enhance the electronic lives uh, with guaranteed quality and prompt service and support a circular economy and contribute towards a sustainable environment. This is one of the trends which we see is not only like uh, is uh, pretty evident globally, but also in Asian countries. For example, Asian countries has been like seeing an exponential growth in demand for the refurbished products, right? With the growing, and largely these are being driven by the growing focus on the sustainability and the circular economy. And refurbished products are the ones who are like propelling this uh, particular trend forward. This trend is, uh, and in India too, we, what we have witnessed in the last few years is this trend is like really become up a strong momentum, right? Being a, one of the fastest growing economies, the country is ripe, ripe for these new opportunities and there's tremendous growth potential in the market for the refurbished items. Uh, major global businesses have started to realize the reuse and recycling have turned into a major point of consideration now uh, with most of the big corporates, right? Uh, by encouraging refurbished products in the market, the nation will fuel greater progress in the economy even aiming to firmly tackle environmental challenges, which have been long been prevalent threat to the life on this planet. India is seeing a stellar uptrend on the refurbished market. And the expectation is this market will grow at least double in size by 2025 itself. Uh, especially now, uh, like tech-enabled products are leading the leg, uh, which is like pretty obvious in that sense, right? The unpredicted, unpredicted demand for reconditioned product is marked an all-time high in the nation and largely COVID, for example, we started our business with COVID and we have seen this with global COVID-led pandemic has led to an exponential increase in a work from home culture and hence the increase in demand of such products uh, by the retail customers and also from the uh, most of the companies. Also, we want to call out that typically we are able to provide this uh, like uh, the high quality products just as good as new at a price range which is marketly at 30 to 40 percent discount from a new product. Now let me take uh, some minutes to talk about our financial performance for the first half which is H, uh, H1 FY24. Uh, continuing on our three years of growth momentum, right? our H1 uh, FY24 we continued with a similar momentum. Our top line grew uh, by 86 percent. Uh, comparing it on an H1 to FY23 to FY24 basis, uh, which was as per our like, growth uh, plan trajectory. Uh, in terms of our gross margin, 
we saw a even better improvement uh, which stood at around 92% year on year improvement uh, we reported an ebitda of uh, 4.06 crores uh, for uh, uh, h1 fy24 uh, with a top line sales of 26.75 crores so our ebitda on an year on year h1 to h1 comparison basis almost increased by 50% in terms of uh, uh, and uh, yes i mean most of these growths are largely driven by the huge uptick in the demand that we continue to uh, see in the market uh, we reported a 39% of rise in our net profit and our net profit stood at 2.90 crores uh, for this particular h1 fy which is at a 25% year on year uh, growth in terms of earning per, uh, per share we reported a 2.45 earning per share uh, for this particular uh, h1 uh, just to call out on couple of uh, things as uh, in terms of finance right as uh, as i highlighted uh, top line grew at a very robust pace of 86% uh, uh, and at the same time in terms of gross margin we saw even a better improvement which stood at almost at 92% key reason for the better improvement in the gross margin is our improvement in the operational efficiency or reduction in terms of the spares that we use which we were able to derive uh, through our better operational being able to repair more parts than to replace them in terms of the slight uh, dip which was uh, in terms of our ebitda and pad uh, this has been in line with what uh, with our expectations and the plan the key drivers for the same uh, so we saw approximately uh, 3.5 or 4% of drop uh, in pad right so three key factors driving that one uh, was a increase in the employee cost employee cost incre- increase uh, contributed to approximately 3% of the margin impact this is aligned with our plan i'm also very glad to share that Uh, at the start of uh, or the end of the last financial year our headcount stood at two approximately 250 employees uh, uh, h1 fy24 ending uh, we had an employee base of 555 we continue to increase our employee base to cater to the large demand and to expand our uh, operations to be able to cater to that so this is as per like the, in the plan line that we proactively hired more people and being a uh, slightly labor intensive uh, like uh, you know like a business uh, it does take uh, people uh, there's a, like a ramp plan uh, which eventually uh, showcases on the margin second key factor that uh, like there was a 0.8 impact because of the financial cost uh, this was again intentional because uh, for us h2 uh, h2 is a very significant or the uh key uh, cycle in terms of financial year where that's where the diwali season uh, and other things comes and we de- we always ramp up our inventory to get prepared for s2 and that in turn reflects on our increase in the financial cost as well so these were the two key uh, reasons where uh, we saw a dip in our ebitda and largely to summarize i think these are the investments that we are making uh for the long term growth that we are envisaging as such a uh, couple of other key uh, proceedings or the highlights for h1 fy24 uh, which i'd like to share with the group uh, in october our new facility which has 35 35000 sft or space uh, which can cater to almost 550 to 600 new employees has become fully operational uh we uh, while we are also maintaining our old facility uh, which is of 18000 sft of space and can cater to 300 employees uh, so uh, this uh, place has been fully made operational in the month of october uh, just before the diwali uh, season and has helped us to uh, cater to the diwali demand uh, another uh, other key proceedings for h1 was Uh, we continue to look at different channels uh, that can help us uh, in robust growth of the revenue stream uh, two things that we want to call out is uh, that we continue to engage with schools and colleges uh, we have been able to close on two significant uh, deals uh, with two pretty large colleges and one with a very large ngos we strongly believe that the value proposition that we are providing uh, is very strong uh, especially for the education sector 
and we continue to see a lot of interest coming from this particular uh, sector and like we are pretty uh, delighted to have started these large engagements with them. Um, another significant aspect to share is as a company we call ourselves as technology driven and we continue to invest in technology heavily. Uh, in a month we will be rolling out our ERP 4.0 which is the next version of ERP. Uh, we strongly believe that it will further help us to a scale our operations and significantly improve our operational efficiency at the at the same time help us to build better financial controls in that regard also as we prepare for the scale uh, we have been able to close on like uh, like the important leadership positions in h1 uh, ashish has joined us as our cfo uh, Sharad Somani, who comes with a 22 years of experience from Western Union, has joined us as a CHO, CMO. And Mr. Bhaskar, who comes with a 30 years of experience on the technology front, has joined us as a, uh, our CTO, as a Chief Technology Officer. With a strong team and uh, our CapEx uh, uh, showing good results, we strongly believe that we are now in a good position to scale the business at the momentum that we have been able to continue for the uh, last uh, three years. Uh, of course, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to all the significant stakeholders who have shown faith in our business and have continued to support us. Uh, we are very confident that with this growing macroeconomic uh, factors and our ability to put the right uh, team and the investments in place, we will be able to continue at the significant pace. Uh, with sincere thanks to each one of you. Now I request the operator to open the floor for questions and answers. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. The first question is from the line of Devrat Himat Sinka from Augmenta Asset Manager. Please go ahead. Hi, Vishesh. Fantastic performance. Uh, really happy to see what you guys have done and how you're building up the team. Just have a couple of questions. Uh, one is, you know, if you can just shed some light, because from whatever I understood, the challenge going forward for us is procurement. What are we going to be doing to solve to solve this issue? Because, uh, and uh, the second thing is, on a macro front, you know, most of the work is done, or most of the refurbishing is done out of say, places like Dubai and Bangkok. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, how do you see the shifting to India, and uh, and why would it shift to India? Like, if you can just mm -hmm. throw some throw some light on this. Uh, sure. Uh, sure. So th th these are my questions. Sure. Uh, thanks, Devrat. Thanks for uh, uh, so your kind words. Uh, I I think both are good good questions. So taking the first question with respect to how do we ensure that we are able to procure uh, uh, depending on the demands that we are seeing. Couple of things that I want to call out is uh, that a we are like have been uh, cautiously working on that front, right? So uh, uh, key things that we want to share is one of the things that we continue to track is how many of our purchases are happening directly from the corporate front, and I'm happy to share that even in H1 we uh, continuously keep seeing that our that trend uh, continues to improve, right? So from where our purchases from the corporate stood at around 15 to 18 percent in last year. Now it is somewhere around 22 to 25 percent. Um, key factors, I think, what will drive this, and another significant development that I want to share is that uh, we are also closing on a leadership position who will help us directly procure from the corporate. So our strategy here will continue to be uh, work with the top corporates in India. Right, and build that continuous supply of the assets. Right, looking at the India macroeconomic picture for the purchases. Right, um, at the end of the day, uh, corporates are consuming around 50 lakh to 60 lakh assets every year. Right, so that's the kind of the numbers that we are talking about that should ideally be coming out uh, every uh, in a churn of a circular economy and every three to four years of. Uh, you know, churn, right? So macroeconomically, I, I, we feel there's a significant opportunity uh, in terms of, you know, like the numbers being available there. And uh, so we look at, when we look at purchase, we look at direct purchase from the corporates working with the OEMs, looking at the leasing companies when these assets comes out of it. And we are continuously working with them 
in terms of securing this pipeline at a much more strategic level right? now uh, coming to your second question you know like how does the global as you rightly mentioned right i mean uh, dubai sharja these uh, are like currently the hubs for refurbishment for a uh, global supply chain perspective right uh, with the developed nations uh, like nations being the feeders right and the developing na- nations being the consumers how does uh, we feel uh, india can strongly like play a role i think it plays on all the two or three aspects one definitely i mean we all know in terms of uh, cost of like uh, in terms of human cost right so labor cost in india is significantly almost at a 30% price point as compared to these particular areas right so mm-hmm. and repair as an industry or refurbishing as a like an industry has a almost a 3x labor elasticity as compared to assembling a new laptop right so for example i'm pretty sure if you compare our employee cost as per percentage of the overall cost structure versus a uh, company making new laptops it's on a higher side right so this industry inherently is labor intensive which we strongly feel it gives an edge to india second key factor again is in terms of uh, skill labor force right so i i think at the end of the day even in these places a uh, source of the skilled labor force continues to be india right so in that regard what i feel is we have a large resource period pool for skilled labor force right third key aspect that which we strongly believe is our investment in technology to build it as a scalable solution right so besides the cost advantage we feel that the technology that we are investing in the processes that we are uh, investing in is will make us ready to not only be able to like lower the cost just because of the human factor or the labor factor but also you know like build that platform to do these things uh, at scale having said that uh, as of today there are certain uh, you know the like government uh, uh, regulation challenges to directly get uh, used assets into india uh there has been a, like a policy change ftp policy change foreign trade policy change in uh, this particular financial year uh, where government has allowed on a pilot basis for the use assets to be brought into india refurbished in india but has to be sold outside the country uh, we personally believe that this is a landmark pilot and we do actively look forward to work uh, in tandem uh, with government to see how uh, this can be uh, taken forward right uh, we feel that if we are able to get those regulations in place india should ideally be the right place to become a global center of excellence for refurbishing as such for the kind of the technological competencies that this country provides and uh, also for the cost advantage uh, as a country that we provide thank you thank you and uh, and one one last question sorry uh just uh, want to understand uh so i mean uh, i mean how if if say oem were to come and do this themselves do you think mm-hmm. would they end up doing it like say for example would an hp or a dell uh could i mean could they do this in house or would they outsource it like uh, you know just want uh, just want to understand what your research on this entire thing says yeah right so i think the, whatever discussions we have with the oem i think the whole dna of a repair and refurbishing as such right as a business is very different from a new business right so we do definitely look at oems as more of a collaborative partners because a uh, we are one of the channels that can help facilitate them sell new assets right uh, to the corporates because of the churn because of the circular economy right and uh, hope uh, like the way we uh, look at it uh, is that definitely oems will be looking at competent partners right to provide high quality assets to the retail customers then uh, to get into this whole business uh, largely uh, from the operational complexity perspective and also from the perspective of direct competition with their uh, main product which is a new product as such right so they would be more happy to look at the exchange offers to drive the sales to the corporates for this right so that's the kind of the land, like uh, the view that we are getting from the market right that they were if at all uh, it could be potentially uh, down the line it could be more of a co-branding 
kind of an exercise right uh, where they would like to collaborate uh, with a partner who can like do justice to their brands than to like go solo and such right right no got it thanks thanks so much vishay thank you bro yeah. thank you the next question is from the line of swapnil kabra from sk enterprises please go ahead um hi sir am i audible uh, yes you are uh sir i just wanted to understand do we have any internal aspiration or any kind of guidance you can give with respect to the top line and the margins for this year and the next year uh so as a policy we do not give like forward looking uh, guidelines right uh, we have been able to see a strong momentum for the last 3 years right um i i think in the macro level we see a continued demand in the market and uh, we will always try to put our best foot forward in terms of being able to cater to that all right all right sir sir and uh, can you uh, also give share some uh, ebitda margins with respect to the uh, different segments you cater to uh, for example uh, the uh, professionals or the college going students uh, or the you know b2b side of your business is there any difference in the ebitda margin here uh, it's a good question right so i think largely the margins remain more or less the same across segments uh when it comes to bulk deals like with smes or school colleges right uh, we do see a 1 to 2% basis for difference here or there right but largely we do not like differentiate in terms of the margin when it comes to retail professionals or this right so like it's pretty much like flat in that sense or as a last question for my side right? sir uh, with respect to the diwali sale i guess uh, our h2 is very uh, you know uh, h2 is uh, heavy compared to h1 so can right. you share some uh, uh, some some color on uh, uh, the h2 part of our business uh, because uh, i guess there was this notification that you put that uh, the diwali sale uh, that the uh, record sale this year so can you just share some highlight on uh, on that part no, absolutely right so historically that's what we are seeing that h2 typically because of the festive season this is the shara diwali christmas followed by you know like new year and then like uh, your republic day sale right is typically always a stronger season and also because of our like a growing so uh, like you know growth moment on a month on month basis right so historically we have seen that there is a split of anywhere between like say 35 to 65 between h1 to h2 uh, to 40 to 60 the kind of a ratio between h2 and h2 h1 right uh, so i think this year also whatever like trends uh, we see yes i mean of course this year's diwali it was as per Uh, the expectation of course like the biggest uh, like uh, season that we had uh, across all the three years that we have been operating uh, so we are very hopeful that this s2 should continue with a similar trend which we have been uh, seeing in the last uh, three years in terms of h1 to h2 ratios so the similar momentum we are seeing and i think in terms of our ability to uh, cater to that demand uh, already those investments have been put in place to be ready to cater to those demand all right sir do we see any uh, any other month similar to diwali where uh, you see higher sales uh, for instance um, 26th january or any any other day that you could uh, you know boost your sale by giving some discount yes sir so we continue to run those campaigns right uh, from time to time right so uh, for example i mean you know come uh, march april that becomes you know like a student season or like starting of like that's where we see a lot of traction coming from the students uh, christmas new year typically because of financial year ending for many of the corporates which are aligned with the global businesses right and we continue to build our campaigns around uh, these things right now uh, we are running a black friday sale i'll be more than happy to bring that to everyone's notice and do uh, consider if you are planning to do certain purchases So yes, I mean from time to time uh, we do run these campaigns: uh, Christmas, New Year, uh, Independence Day, right? Uh, Prime Day by Amazon is a big uh, event as such for us. All right, sir. All the best, sir. And I'll join with you for more questions. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of uh, Deepak Chokhani from Radhe Capital. Please go ahead. Hi Vishesh, uh, congrats on the success of your IPO and to promote such a unique company in a short span of three years. 
I have two questions. Sure. Uh, what is the? I mean, I don't need an estimate for this year or next year. I can understand uh, about your policy. But can can we get some broad picture? What's your vision for the next three to five years? Mm -hmm. uh, on a big picture basis, I mean, yes. like, I don't know how to quantify, sure. but let's say 500 crore top line, or where do you want to see yourself, or where do you want to see the company in the next three to five years? I think, yeah, uh, good question. I, I thank uh, Deepak, first of all, right? Uh, good question, Deepak. I'll, I'll try to share our vision for the next three to five years, right? Uh, a, uh, when it comes to numbers, I think uh, we would uh, like to see that if we are able to continue with the similar momentum that we have built for the last three years, right, uh, for the coming three to five years. In terms of like how do we foresee us as a company in the next three to five years or where our vision is, um, we in five years down the line, I think we would love to be uh, known as a globally acknowledged, you know, like a refurbished uh, company focus on the electronic segment, right? So the way we look at it is that we love to go deep, build those competencies, and then we would like to see if there's an opportunity to leverage these competencies at a global level and also look at different product diversification uh, on a similar electronics uh, category as such, right? So that's how I think like our three to five uh, years vision looks like that. Uh, we should be, uh, try to become a significant player making a significant contribution in terms of reduction of the e-waste at the same time, you know, improving the digital accessibility across globe, right, in the next uh, five years. So that's one of, like, the visions we are looking at. In terms of concrete numbers, as you said, right, I mean, I would rather we don't prefer to make any forward-looking uh, statements, but I think uh, we, we do aspire to continue a strong momentum that the team has built in the last uh, three years, we do understand that, you know, there's a huge opportunity in terms of market size. And if we continue at a similar momentum also, right, uh, we might still not be in like next three to five years, even like a four to five percent of the overall opportunity size as such. Right? Uh, but yeah, I would prefer not to give any numbers guidance as such. Sure, sure. No, is that, that makes sense. Thanks for that, Vishesh. My uh, last question is any other related segments you would like to get in in the near future uh, in the near future like for example e-waste or mm. or probably apart from the laptops any other products uh, you know uh, you mm. you would like to get into uh, sure so i i think as i mentioned i i there are two like principles that on which we are working that whatever we pick first let's go deep right and then go wide right Having said that, I think uh, the way we evaluate at the different product mix is definitely that once we have built those competencies, how we can uh, use that competency and a similar supply chain in terms of purchase and uh, customer segment, right, to cater to more uh, like products, right? So having said that, yes, I mean, though we haven't like put in place in terms of concrete uh, product line roadmap, but definitely there are many products that uh, will qualify for these criteria. Uh, for example, we are always looking at IT, IT peripherals that includes your, you know, like, uh, like your Wi-Fi and printers and also looking at tablet as a category, right? And so on and so forth, right? So when it comes to product uh, diversification, yes, I mean, at the right opportune time, right, we would uh, continue to look at uh, different uh, product lines and add them uh, whenever we feel we are uh, ready to cater to a new product mix. But these are like some of the examples uh, that I would like to uh, share in that regard. Perfect, Vishesh. Thank you so much and all the best. Thank, thank you, Deepak. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Chinmay Rane from Cojin Finvest. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I just wanted to understand that uh, now our total strength is around 800 plus. So, uh, with this new facility, uh, what can one can project with this staff strength of 800 on the top line basis? Can uh, be related to the number of employees, the top line? Uh, so, uh, thanks for the question. Uh, uh, in terms of the yeah, employee base, uh, the, 
I think the only thing I want to like share here is that there's always a lag in terms of you know like training and getting people to the full speed, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. yes. I mean, there is a, you can say there's always a correlation in terms of because being a labor intensive business, there is a correlation between your employee strength and your output uh, that you can uh, produce as such. So. Yes, so uh, having. Uh, when she is in a fully operation or once she is tasked with fully put to the skill set, what kind of a revenue we can fetch? Uh, with the this particular base? Right. Yes, with this particular base. Like now we are recently employed this around 550 people. As, uh, having them to the full strength of their capacity, what kind of a revenue we can expect? Right. So. Uh... <laughs> So we have an employee to like a throughput ratio of almost 0. 0.5 to 0. 0.7, right, on a daily basis, right. Okay. So, so in terms of top lines, right, uh, I mean, uh, as we, I mean, it will like definitely take time, right, and I do not want to make any like forward looking statements as such. Uh, okay. But yes, I mean, we can expect on a daily basis and like a product uh, throughput of anywhere between 350 to 400 units. Okay. And so, uh, this is adding to the government policy or, uh, you know, or as compared uh, with regarding to the ease as general, is there any particular guide has been mentioned for this electronic item of which we have to discard or the refurbish unit? That is what is helping us to get this uh, refurbish, uh, I mean, refurbishable uh, stock for the system. Uh, so you are saying that our government uh, policy is pushing this refurbishing uh, demand, right? For yeah, basically sub- any uh, useful asset like of an electronic, say what we are into, like computers, uh, laptops and all. So this is in particular life has been mentioned. Generally, it is a high year, but it is in the regulatory uh, thing which is there, which has to be, uh, you know, sold or which has to be... Uh, taken out of the program and then you can do the refurbish which can be again put back to the use. Right. So in terms of government policies, I think the policies are with respect to e-waste policies are already in place, right? Uh, yes, the uh, awareness of these particular policies and also the proactive behavior from the corporates uh, towards sustainability, right? Mm-hmm. I think these are two key factors and also I think the cost implications, right? That are making, I feel, the corporates much more responsible in terms mm-hmm. of what is happening with their electronic space, right? So I think, yes, I mean, at a macro level, right, maybe like uh, 10 years uh, before, right, uh, mm-hmm. people did not worry that much about discarding their e-waste, especially corporates. Right. But mm-hmm. we do see that, like, you know, like a, a sustained uh, cautiousness, right, uh, coming in most of the corporates to ensure that uh, e waste A is handled uh, appropriately, and B, if it helps in extending of the assets, right? Uh, so, yeah, and our government policies, I would uh, like to say that yes, I mean, the government policies has played their role, uh, but mm-hmm. if you benchmark it against the developed nation, I think India has still a long way to go, right? So, uh, right, so we are still talking about 40 to 50 lakh assets uh, being consumed by the corporates and I'll be surprised if, you know, 10 to 15 percent of them are being judiciously discarded in a responsible way right now, right? Yeah. So this trend, we strongly believe, will continue to uh, extend in that regard. And that will provide a huge scope for a company like this. No, absolutely, yeah. I think, I mean, uh, gradually, I think across loops, uh, you will see uh, these policies uh, from being directional uh, to, to becoming more of a compliance leg, right? And as and when like, the move moves towards that, right, it becomes like a must-have rather than good to have, right? Mm-hmm. So, so my next question is like when we go so many OEMs or any corporate, is there an obligation thing to sell back to them? Not necessarily, no. no. So we are a product-centric company, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so mm-hmm. in general, uh, as of uh, our first preference is always to uh, own the asset person because we want to uh, like uh, control the end customer's experience, right? So yes, I mean even if such deals happen, uh, we keep them mutually exclusive. Okay. 
Sir, and now with our total staff strength of 800 and plus, how much are the skill makers who are basically into the engineering side and how much is the number of page posts? Sorry, I didn't get that. I think the signal was not right. Uh, out of our total staff strength of around 800 plus people, how many mm -hmm. are the engineers working towards refurbishing the system? And uh, so how much are in the sales force? Sales force, yeah. So our sales force continue to be very nimble because we are online first company, right? So as of today, I think our sales force constitute of probably 9 to 10 people only, right? Largely, okay. most of our workforce is in operation. When it comes to sales, we are always looking for scalable online first uh, platform driven or direct to, uh, you know, like large channels like SME and D, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so most of them would be uh, like in the operation side uh, and they would be like uh, blue collared along with some technical engineers as such. Oh. And so my, uh, <coughs> so my last question is, uh, like we we have sold to around 19,000 cities, 19,000 cities. So uh, where exactly uh, our sales is concentrated? Is it in a particular state or we sell across it? Yeah, so I think uh, as we mentioned in our DRHP also, so we see a pan-India, you know, like uh, demand because we are online uh, company, right? Having said that, because of being based out of South, which is Bangalore, uh, mm -hmm. so the, I think the South is contributing approximately 35% of our uh, overall the top line, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, like the, the East always, you know, for any company is the lowest, right? Uh, but we see like pan-India like demand and I won't attribute that uh, the demand of 35%, it's more of, you know, like the tyranny of location in the sense, right? So as we continue to uh, build more uh, distributed, like, uh, you know, like channels uh, for, uh, you know, like supply, uh, mm -hmm. I think demand for the other regions will also like significantly pick up. But it's very diversified as such, right? Only like 30, 33 percent is from south and uh, approximately some 20, 25 ish from north and you know, 22 percent from the west, so on and so forth. Right? So it's, it's pretty diversified in that sense. Okay. Well, I mean, there won't be any cost on the logistic when we are uh, moving out of Bengal. Yeah, so I think one good thing with the electronics or the high value items is that your uh, like you know like weight to value ratio is like very biased, right? Uh, so overall cost of logistics uh, to the overall value, right, is not that high. Okay. And so my last question is I might have missed on your opening remarks. So the two factory is one is of eighty thousand square feet and one is of a newly opened thirty five thousand uh, square feet, sorry, 35,000, right? 35,000 square feet. So they both are in the Bangalore itself, or we have any difference? No, no, both are in uh, Bangalore. They're almost like uh, co-located in a way, like just like three kilometers away from each other. Um, I think our business is also like a business of scale. Uh, after uh, like a particular uh, like a point, uh, it does make uh, sense to uh, like, you know, like uh, add a uh, different mm -hmm. uh, like uh, facility as such. And both these facilities are on lease? Sorry? Both these facilities are on lease or it is our own property? Both are leased. Yes. Okay, sir. Thank you so much and all the very best for your interview, sir. I'll come back in. Thank you for the question. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nikhil Chandak from GM Family Office. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, thanks. So, a uh, couple of questions. One is, you know, as you keep growing more in size and scale, how do you manage your, uh, you know, working capital? That is, that is one. What are the levers to really improve that? And would you need to do any kind of future fundraise to kind of uh, fund your working capital? The second mm -hmm. one is, you know, quite a few articles about how the brands themselves are also getting into the refurbished space. So whether mm -hmm. it's HP, Dell, and, you know, the articles talking about they wanting to open stores, uh, you know, to focus specifically on the refurbished laptops, etc. So from a competition perspective, if the brands themselves get into it, uh, mm -hmm. you know, what do you think in terms of uh, what it can, you know, whether it can have some impact on your business? These were the two questions. Yes, absolutely, right? Uh, so thanks so much for the questions, Nikhil. Uh, so first, with respect to the working capital, right? I, as you rightly mentioned, I think ours uh, is a working capital heavy business because we own the asset, we get the assets, we refurbish them, and then we 
sell these assets and there's a like a cash cycle in that regard, right? Having said that, I think we uh, do see opportunity across this particular supply chain or the cash cycle chain, right? So uh, starting from like, on the purchase side, right? So right now, like most of the purchases are on cash or like, you know, like uh, pay will be just on a bidding system. And that's where when I was talking about being like uh, building more of direct purchases from the corporates and building those strategic relationships, uh, we strongly believe that that can help us with some in terms of credit uh, cycles there. I think the largest chunk will come from more of an operational efficiency. For us, like the last three years has been uh, dedicated in terms of building the technological know-how, right? Uh, but at the same time, uh, we are now very squarely focused in terms of uh, reducing the operation cycle. And uh, like bring uh, at least trying to bring a 20 to 30 percent improvement in that regard, uh, right? Uh, third key factor which leads to our like working capital or cash cycle also because cash cycle in turn is leading to higher working capital, right? Uh, is uh, uh, from the account receivable perspective, right? Uh, so being an e- like the e-commerce uh, like kind of a model, right? So there was a 14 to 15 days of dependency there. As we continue to diversify our channels, uh, get into more of direct sales and directly collaborate with school colleges, SME, uh, we feel there is a strong opportunity in that regard also to reduce on the uh, cash cycle, which in turn will help us to reduce our working capital requirement. Right. So I think when I look at working capital requirement, I'm looking at the overall cash cycle, and I think we have opportunity across all the three areas, which is the purchase, operations, and you know, the AP, AR, and the operations as such. And, so, uh, unlike most, say, in general, what e-commerce models you have in India, uh, obviously mm-hmm. they are not in the same sector, but most are marketplace models, whereas mm-hmm. yours is a complete inventory-led model where you will actually buy the inventory, refurbish it, and in, and in turn sell. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, even if you have levers, this will be a perpetual issue, right? Because you will buy the... Mm-hmm. Inventory today, you refurbish it, mm-hmm. and by the time you sell it, it may take whatever days, 30, 60 days, sure. for example, or 30 days, sure. for example. Unlike right. for other e-commerce companies, there is no inventory risk at all which they carry. So, right. is this something which should, yes. should always be there, this issue? Yes. Yes. So, I think uh, right from like the day one, I mean, that's the call, right? Because I think it's always a compromise between value addition, right, and the asset risk, correct? Right? So, because in a marketplace model, I think the whole... Uh, concept largely entails around of you know like like not much of a value addition but distribution as such right so uh, but we, we were very clear that because it's like the start of the industry per se and in terms of like being customer focused uh, we have to like do a lot of value addition in terms of delivering top quality and that particular part uh, we can only do when we like own the asset and invest in terms of value addition and also in turn uh, like manage the customer experience, right? Uh, that does mean that our model is no, like, you know, just a technology like, like an app based model, which is very asset like, right? So, and I think, I mean, that's one of the key risks we have always highlighted in our DRSP. I think from the industry's uh, perspective of creating this as a category, um, uh, our personal belief is that, like, uh, like, yes, it will for some time will continue to be an asset heavy. Uh, business uh, because uh, we strongly believe that yes, whatever uh, you know, the incremental cost of uh, that finance is there, the value addition that we do gives a much better, right, and uh, significant returns, right. I think Lenovo just came out with their results. It will be very uh, like, uh, like it will be like a, a good uh, case study to look at the net margins, right, versus our net margins, right. Uh, so, yes, I mean. It's a, it's a cautious call as a company that we have taken that we don't want to be just an aggregator or a trader of the assets, uh, right? Uh, but be more of a uh, value addition person uh, uh, so that we are able to establish this as a category. Right. Perfect. Great. Thanks. And on the on the second part, on the competition part, where the brands are <laughs> wanting to get into, uh, you know, in a, in a in some fashion by opening stores, etc. That's the question, right? So I, I think that a couple of ways we look at it, right? So I think, uh, for example, SP made an announcement that they will be starting with the refurbishing business, right? For us, it was like kind of a great validation in terms of what we have been trying to do for the last three years, right? So that the more uh, it's being acknowledged by the brand of this being a mainstream market as such, right? Having said that, yes, uh, 
a couple of like patterns that we have because we have been like working very tandemly with the OEMs also, right? Uh, is a uh, and that relates to the first question which was being asked, right? Uh, that uh, I, I think like OEMs would uh, uh, would rather look for like collaborators right now, right? And we do look at, up to them in terms of being complementary in nature, right? So be it in terms of lending the brand or in terms of purchase of their old assets, right? Right. So, uh, in that regard, I think it will help. Secondly, I think it's a large market, right? In India, the, still the penetration is only uh, 13% in terms of uh, overall uh, PC holding, right? Um, and time and again, what we have seen is that uh, once like more category comes mainstream, it helps all the players as such, right? So, there are two things. Like we strongly believe that the OEMs will look for more of a collaboration. Even right now, we know that for example, the uh, HP refurbishing, uh, A, the scale, and it's more of a collaborative effort uh, than a going solo effort as such, right? I mean, uh, for the market reasons, I cannot like share the names as such, right? And secondly, I think there's a large market. Uh, the brands coming into this uh, will showcase, like, uh, will help to further, uh, like, increase the size of the pie itself. Understood. Perfect. And the last one, uh, you know, I mean, see, this was... Maybe it's more noise, but I thought it's best to clarify this. You know, just before the IPO, there was a lot of press about some kind of a legal issue in terms of some complaints, etc. Now, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, the articles were also sketchy, and I don't want to believe the article in its entirety because, you know, mm -hmm. it's misleading. But I thought it's just best to transparently get an update from you. What exactly was the issue on hand, and is, is that settled out? Mm -hmm. So I think let's say first like uh, we have already given a like uh, official statement on the same. Uh, so we strongly reject all and any allegations as such uh, made. Uh, besides that, I would uh, leave it uh, to the readers, right? Uh, assuming the timing and the other like the content of the same. Given that the, because the matter is sub uh, I will not be able to comment on that. But. We are looking for a, like we have uh, taken our own aggressive stand on that. But because the matter is of duties, we cannot comment on that. No, perfect. Perfect. Great. Thank you so much. All the best. Thank you. Thank you, Nikhil. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nagraj Chandrasekhar from Emerge Capital Opportunities Fund. Please go ahead. Hi, good afternoon, and thank you for my question, uh, taking my question. Uh, I think following up with the prior participant, uh, mm -hmm. I wanted to ask it in a slightly different way. I think the, the issue is not with OEMs doing what we do, but others starting off trying to do what we are doing from scratch, like you did you know, three years ago. So can you talk about the tech advantages and edge that you have built up over time? You said in your presentation that you have L3 refurbishing capabilities. What really are these? How difficult are these two? sort of, uh, you know, understand and uh, um, Absolutely. Uh, fully uh, uh, implement and what all do we plan to do in the next two, two, three years to make our sort of advantage much okay. larger than what anyone entering uh, can sort of get into. Absolutely. Uh, uh, thanks, Nagar, for your question. Uh, I think it's a very, very pertinent point that you have raised. Right? So I think we have been consistently saying that our operational competency uh, driven by tech is our key mode, right? Um, as you rightly mentioned, I think uh, refurbishment as an operation itself is uh, very uh, different as compared to a regular manufacturing. Uh, as you can well understand, I cannot delve into too many details uh, with respect to what and how exactly we do. But just to like share a few examples, right? When we started, we looked for an off-the-shelf ERP or a technological solution, and it was just not available in the market, right? It was, this as an industry never existed, right? So your regular BON, TTC, then the regular concepts of manufacturing do not really uh, work here, right? Having said that, I think for us, the last three years has been rightly, as you mentioned, has been keenly focused in building those technological competencies, which we strongly believe, right, uh, gives us a, a much bigger and a stronger edge as compared to any uh, competitor, right? Uh, like... Uh, uh, and it will, uh, like, you know, like, will be a challenging process as such to build those levels of competency and being able to do it at the scale, right? 
uh, and we operate at each component level, right? Uh, because of you know like uh, various reasons, I would uh, tend not to uh, share like details in a public forum. Uh, but yes, uh, we strongly believe that the technological competency. Uh, processes, operational, and even the hardware competencies that we have built. Uh, we have done a lot of things which are like ground up and are uh, not that easily uh, replicable as such. Understood. Thank you. Uh, one more question on the size of the market. Uh, you mm -hmm. mentioned 50, 60 lakh unit sales, um, you know, purchases of laptops by corporates. I think the total San India purchases of laptops, for example, is around. Uh, uh, you know, per 20 million or three times that, uh, year, 20 million odd per year. And obviously, uh, you mentioned that the, the recycling hubs being Dubai and Sharjah probably do a lot, lot more than that in terms of volume. Just want to understand how much they do in terms of throughput on an annual basis and who are the large players there, uh, doing, uh, this business that, you know, we can, you know, this government is generally very logical. Uh, mm -hmm. India should be the place to do this uh, given labor arbitrage. So, just want to get a sense of the market that is capturable. Thank you. Right. Uh, at, the, at the global level, right? Yes. 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 Yeah. Uh, so, I, I think like a couple of names that I am aware of, for example, Comsail is it's a Canada based uh, company. So, they are like pretty big in terms of refurbishment. Right. And um, yeah, I mean, that's like one of the, like the big names uh, on the uh, right on the global front, right? Uh, there are other players on the U.S., but again, I think the Scom sale is one who is also focusing on the refurbishing, right? So there are others like even you know, like uh, Liquidation.com, but they are more of a trading or aggregator uh, platform, right? Uh, so yes, I mean, I think there are like a couple of like big players uh, who uh, like you know operate at a global global scale. Having said that, I still strongly believe at a global scale uh, like level also in terms of refurbishing, the market is still not that uh, organized, right? So there are a couple of players who are like doing like significant business, but right, I mean, there's no major consolidation as such when it comes to refurbishing capability. And again, I think that leads to the same point that doing refurbishing at scale, right, the operational complexity and the kind of the technological stack that you need to build, right, is not that easy, right. Uh, so, yeah, but there are a couple of players who are operating from Canada and they have their offshoots in Dubai and are uh, operating at a reasonable scale. In terms of like opportunity, I think India as such in IT is like 8% of the overall global economy, like IT uh, purchase and consumption, right? So global opportunities, you can extrapolate in like uh, that regard, right? So, uh, but yes, I mean, we strongly believe in terms of like when we are building those competencies in the scale, I think the idea is we always ask ourselves that can we scale it to 10x, 15x, do we have the underlying technology, do we have that operation which can be is repeatable, scalable in that regard, right? So we do strongly believe that uh, we should be able to build that, like, you know, advantage over others, right? Because it's not that easy to do these things at scale, right? So, yeah, I hope it gives you, like, some sense, hopefully, in terms of scale. Yes, it does. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in the conference, please limit your questions to one per participant. The next question is from the line of Puneet, who is an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity, sir. I just wanted to understand any inventory which is not moving for six months at your site. Mm. Mm. Sure. Yes. So that's one, uh, I would say good, but uh, so uh, the right now it's like zero percent, right? Because it's a very demand-driven market as such, right? So uh, luckily for us, uh, it's like you know, like there's no much of a dead inventory, and we do take requisite uh, steps to make sure, you know, like because I think these are like one of the benefits that we get because we are directly linked and connected with the market, so we really know what is selling, what is not selling. So before we even purchase, we know what the market demand is as such, right? And having said that, I think if we, the, I think that's where the product market fit comes into picture. Right? So the demand always surpasses in terms of, you know, uh, like uh, what we are able to like uh, produce uh, as such, right? So, uh, uh, right now, I think the oldest inventory which we will be holding will be around 50 to 60 days. Yeah. That's also because we got a large volume and we hold like, uh, did a bulk deal of that, those particular units and, but they're like, 
selling pretty healthily as such, right? So there's no like that inventory as such. Having said that, being in the refurbished business, we have a two to three percent of scrap ratio, right? But all of those are already baked in when we do our purchase. Okay, okay. So, just a small follow-up question on the same part. So what is the maximum capacity or maximum number of laptops we can sell in a day? It's like thousand, two thousand. What is the current capacity we have? In terms of sales or operations, uh, sales. Okay. Yeah, sales basically. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So I, I think I mean. Uh, during like the festive season, we have seen the numbers go very significantly, very near to four-digit numbers also, right? But I don't believe that's like the regular like a sale, uh, like you know, like our uh, like capacity. But I think like in a high three digits or like over 400, 500, 600 units uh, is uh, very much possible, depending on how much we are able to produce, uh, right? But that's like the current capacity. In terms of demand, is very high. I'm talking about our capacities in terms of like uh, current sales. Sure. Thanks a lot. I will come back in the queue time for me. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bharat Reddy, who is an individual investor. Please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, hello, Vishesh. Uh, congrats on good numbers. So my question Hi. is, uh, it was mentioned that uh, for FI23, uh, during the evolution, so you made highest stock one year per day. So is it safe to assume that you made one year for that whole uh, Diwali week? Uh, this year? For FY23. Yeah, so I think I was at FY uh, last year you were talking about or this year? This year. Yeah, last year. Last year. Uh, yeah, so I mean that just like one of the KPIs, like the first day itself we hit a one CR in last year. Like the first, like the, the first day is always like the significant uh, day uh, for like Diwali sales, right? And um, yeah, so is, this year also we were easily able to surpass that for the first, the first day sales. Okay, so uh, I have one more question. So you said uh, H1 contributes roughly 40% and H2 60%, right? In general, over the last three years, since new factory is operational, can't H2 beat uh, H1 uh, by a good margin this year? Uh, so uh, we, uh, as per like our company plan, right? So I think it uh, does take uh, like time to ramp up the teams, right? And uh, we are looking at a similar or slightly better target as such. Okay. And like, is, uh, uh, there is a company called Rocking Bills. So, uh, is that competitive in the US or a partner to us? Uh, in a way, partners, we have done some collaborations uh, earlier. As I said, like they are more of a marketplace, right? Uh, they do a back-to-back -back trading, right? Uh, so sometimes we do take spares for them. Sometimes they help us to liquidate our inventory right so uh, their business is like uh, uh, like yeah so i mean they are not into like refurbishing uh, and or controlling the overall supply chain end to end right it's more of a, a marketplace for uh, liquidation of excess or uh, use inventory so thank you thank you sir thanks for that thank you the next question is from the line of Mihir Manohar, who is an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Thanks for giving the opportunity. Uh, and congratulations on the entrepreneur journey and making it a 50 crore business in three years. Uh, that's really commendable. Uh, I just wanted to understand on the fresh issue, I mean, 40 crore. So what is going to be the application of that? Is the new facility which has been started uh, using that number? And I also wanted to understand what can be the full potential revenue uh, which can be there on the, uh, on the overall capacity. Uh, which now exists. Uh, second question was on the, the Diwali sales. I mean, uh, you mentioned Diwali sales has been good. Uh, if you can provide some clarity around, you know, what is the YOI growth that you have seen this Diwali uh, versus the last Diwali, uh, that will be useful. Uh, and the third question was just on the fact that, you know, I mean, when you say this business, uh, typically, I mean, a lot of players have tried uh, in this business, but scalability has been difficult uh, because the local players at the end of the day uh, end up getting the market. Uh, so just wanted to understand, you know, how serious are we about the scalability because now we want the OEs are also entering. Uh, so how we, how serious are we about the scalability uh, along with the same uh, maintaining profitability along with scale? Uh, so just wanted to get an understanding around that. Okay. Uh, so I think the first question was with respect to? Okay, the facility and like the investment of this, right? 
So yes, I think uh, yeah, with respect to the like the issue and the usage of the objective of the issue, right? So there were four objects object of the issue. One was uh, definitely to support our uh, working capital requirement uh, to build the inventory, right? Uh, second object of the issue was definitely towards the capex, right? And uh, as we mentioned, the facility is now uh, ready. Uh, so it was like more of a continuum, right? So we have uh, like already started investing on the on the same. And the funds uh, which we received have also been uh, deployed towards uh, the thing. Uh, third uh, key object of the issue was, as uh, like probably that ties to your last question in terms of like how serious we are in terms of like building this as a market, right? So uh, the third object of the issue was towards marketing spend because we feel like we are like now rightly positioned to create new just as a brand and reach out to as many customers as possible. Uh, and be the brand uh, synonymous to repurpose electronics as well. So marketing was the third object of the issue. Fourth object of the issue was towards the technology spend. As I also highlighted, like the group uh, right now, that uh, we are rolling out the ERP 4.0 for us, like uh, uh, within a month, uh, right? So there are other like significant technology spends that we are doing in terms of our uh, website improvement, app development, so on and so forth. So these are the the were the like four key uh, object for the issues and. Uh, uh, we are uh, working pretty aggressively, as you can see, like the facility is already uh, ready, but we have kept some quantum for the incremental facility that we'll continue to build as our capacity increases on the marketing front already, uh, like the key tires have already started. We are running our first campaign ever on Black Friday right now, right? And technology I just like uh, shared with the group. So that's how the objects have been uh, deployed. Uh, we strongly believe that these are uh, the things that will A, help us build the scale and B, uh, may help us become a known consumer brand in repurposed uh, electronics as such, right? So, okay. And the, sorry, your second question was with respect to? Uh, sure, sir. I wanted to understand what can be the maximum revenue potential from the capacity, enhanced capacity which is now, that is old capacity plus the new capacity. Uh, so what can be the maximum revenue potential? Right, I mean, you know, like uh, right now we are not in a position to make any forward-looking statement, right? But uh, as I mentioned, we are looking at like potentially we can like do 350 to 400 units on a daily basis, right? Uh, and that's the kind of like the momentum we should be able to build with the existing team. But we are continuing ramp, uh, ramping up in terms of you know like um, in terms of the, I mean, we are definitely looking at a 30, 40 percent kind of a growth on a year-on-year -year basis, right? So. That's like second question. Sure, sir. I just last year on the Diwali sale. So I mean, this Diwali versus last Diwali. How was the number? Uh, yeah, so I think, I mean, as you saw an H1 to H1 comparison, I think we were able to maintain a similar momentum for Diwali also. Right. Uh, in terms of Diwali, Diwali comparison. Right. So okay. around 80. Okay. Uh, so that's with respect to the Diwali. And I think your last question was with respect to like uh, again like the OEMs coming into the picture and like uh, you know like uh, when you try to scale uh, how we kind of so from our end I think we are like very committed uh, to build uh, you know like a consumer uh, focused direct to customer brand right and uh, and uh, to like make sure that we are able to scale, scale this as a brand and become a household uh, name as such right so and that's where, like, uh, we will continue to invest, uh, bring more, uh, like, consumer uh, awareness. And right from the first, I think that also ties to one of the other questions asked earlier, uh, that we, do we also get into, you know, like, uh, refurbishing as a service in the sense, like, we get that as a refurbishing, give it back to the corporate. So as of now, we are not moved into that because we want to be a direct to customer, uh, focused brand, brand. We have turned down a couple of deals, uh, right? I mean, uh, because, uh, we want to be more, uh, like, cons like, customer, Focus. There are like a lot of like uh, plans and the marketing campaigns uh, which have been already put in place uh, to ensure that we get that uh, reach uh, in the coming uh, years, right? And uh, we do understand, right? I think one of the things when it comes to you know, like I do realize the concern that like an, uh, for an SME after a scale, you know, like reaching hundred is easy, reaching hundred from thousand uh, is a different uh, kind of a challenge per se, right? Uh, I think the only comment I would like to make there is that we do recognize uh, those kind of challenges and that's where we are significantly invested in terms of like leadership, uh, like, in, you know, like the team, the cumulative experience uh, that this team has. The top four guys have more than like 85 years of experience between them, 
between us we have managed more than a billion dollars of business right uh, i was with google before this right i mean with a significant uh, revenue run rate uh, sharad somani was managing a, like a 500 million dollars of you know like business there so i think we do recognize it's not that easy uh, at the same time i mean i think we are gearing ourselves uh, to be ready uh, for you know the challenges that might come to take it from 100 to 1000 as such Uh, sure, sir. Sure. That's it for my side, sir. Thank you very much. And it is really commendable that you made a 50 crore business. And uh, wish you best of luck for making very large uh, in life. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. As there are no further questions from the participants, I now hand the conference over to Mr. Kaushal Shinde for closing comments. Thank you, everyone, for joining the conference call of New Jersa Tech- Technologies Limited. If you have any queries, you can write to us at info at the rate clean advisors dot com. Once more, thank you, everyone, for joining the conference. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Kirin Advisors, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your line.